Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Master's Table and we're going to get right into our scripture for today. It is out of Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 9 and it says this. Six days later Jesus took Peter and the two brothers James and John and led them up a high mountain to be alone. And as the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. If you want, I'll make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell down on the ground, fell face down on the ground. And then Jesus came over and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus. As they went back down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The writer of Matthew's Gospel went to great pains to persuade his readers that Jesus was a new Moses, bringing a new law to a new Israel. For his Jewish readers, the idea of a, of a dying Messiah was absurd. So the writer had to work hard to convince them that Jesus was indeed who he claimed to be. The resurrection account was of course one of the most important ways Matthew's claim was supported. But in the build-up to the passion narrative in Matthew's Gospel, the Transfiguration was an important revealer of both God's affirmation of Jesus and of God's glory revealed in Jesus. This account served to show that the cross was not God's curse on Jesus, but was an integral part of God's plan for the Messiah. The appearance of Moses and Elijah Representing the law and the prophets revealed that Jesus was the fulfillment of the Old Testament plan of salvation. And Jesus' final words, instructing his disciples to tell no one until he came, had been resurrected, demonstrates that Jesus acted according to a sense of purpose which included his sacrificial death. The important response for us as we reflect on Matthew's purpose in writing his gospel is to recognize the way God's glory is revealed in Jesus. Not just in his miracles and resurrection, but also in his embrace of his sacrificial death. Further, we can take comfort in God's affirmation of Jesus because it reveals something of God's heart. We all face times of struggle suffering and sacrifice and it is tempting to feel that God has either abandoned us or is for some reason punishing us when we face these times of crisis but God's promise to us is the same as God's promise to Jesus in our suffering God's glory can be revealed and we can experience a deeper sense of God's presence and affirmation all we need to do is recognize that God is with us and that even in our suffering God still seeks to use us to reveal God's glory to those around us. How can you reflect God's glory to those around you today, especially when you experience times of trial? Well, what's our application? One of the most difficult but important choices we can make as followers of Jesus is to nurture our awareness of God's presence and glory in every moment of our lives. This is especially necessary when we face times of struggle. And so the practice of invocation, when it becomes a daily habit, is exactly what we need to grow our awareness of God's Spirit. Today, whether you are celebrating or grieving, invite God's Spirit to work within you and to remind you of God's presence in your life. Let us pray. In my joy and in my sorrow, Holy Spirit, remind me and remind all of us of your grace and glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. May God bless you as you continue to feast every day from the Master's Table.